Improving the way I store the Tacoma recovery boards. Well, good morning, everybody. How are you today? Pretty good here, and that's right. Today I'm gonna I'm gonna improve the way I store the recovery boards on the Tacoma here. Um, first of all, I think it's a great place to put them. If you have these and you want to store them somewhere inside the bed of the truck, up against the back of the bed is the best way to, to do it, in my opinion. But the way I did it, I kind of, and you'll be able to see this once I tear it down because I am going to have to tear it down. Uh, but the way that I did it, I put these little bolts, if you will, I forget what they're called, but there are uh, studs that come through, threaded bolts, if you will, and then these little nuts here. Now, to get these off, I have to have a tool. I cannot do this by hand. That's the problem. I mean, if you're out somewhere, you don't want to have to screw around with a tool, right? You want to be able to just take them off. So I'm going to make a bit of a change here to improve these so that I can indeed pull them off without having to have some sort of a tool. So let me grab a tool, we'll remove them, and I'll show you what I'm gonna do. Okay, first off, to get them off, um, you need, I think I have, what is this? Uh, a 5 8 socket or a 16 millimeter will also work. Um, but I'm gonna try to just get these off. And the problem I've had already is when I go to spin them off, the bolt spins, right? The screw, if you will. And uh, and they won't come off without wedging something behind them uh, to loosen them. So we're gonna see, of course they're painted now too, that doesn't help. But we're gonna see if, uh, if I can indeed just loosen them up. That one doesn't look too bad, let's see. And I don't know if you can see, but it indeed does look like um, the whole bolt is turning. So I probably will have to wedge something back behind there. And you can imagine trying to do this when you're out stuck somewhere and having to screw with this, right? Just doesn't make sense. So I am going to get these off and then I'll uh, show you the next step, I guess, in what I'm going to do. Okay, you can see I got the uh, nuts or whatever you call these things uh, off. They did come off without having to stick anything behind the bolts here, uh, but they were definitely not easy. Probably took me about five minutes just to remove four things that you should be able to do by hand. So obviously this is not the best solution uh, to, to secure these down, I guess, uh, when you actually might need them. So let's go ahead, pull these off. They should just pull right off now. There we go. And we'll set them aside. You can see here, here's the screws through. Fortunately, there's no bee's nest or anything in there. Didn't even think about that, really. And uh, I do have some other bolts in here, uh, nuts, rather, to contend with. I did that to secure these so they didn't bounce around. Uh, I am going to have to pull those nuts off, obviously, um, to be able to remove everything because we are going to change these studs out to something longer. All right, I've got the boards off, as you can see here. These are the little strips, I guess, that I put in. This, of course, is what was attached to the board. Uh, they're just bolted in the tracks here uh, by these little uh, blocks, I guess, that are threaded, maybe you can see behind there. So I'm gonna mark where these are so I don't have to try to figure it out and measure it again because it works the way they are. Uh, because I have to pull these off uh, to be able to get the screws out to put bigger bolts uh, behind them, obviously, or longer bolts, I should say. So I'm gonna pull these off and then I'll show you my plan. Okay, over here at the work a bench, what I'm planning to do, I bought five and a half inch bolts. And my idea there is to take this two inch spacer, put it inside like so, and then use one of these little knobs that you can twist off by hand, right? Screw that down against the spacer and that's gonna hold everything tight against the truck. That is my plan. So we'll see if that works. If it doesn't, I will put a strip across here and then I will bolt down or screw down to that strip to hold it across. But I don't really wanna do that. The other issue that I have in doing this though, let me show you, is the back of the bolt. 
Uh, the back of the bolt, it's a carriage bolt, and it has the square little nub at the bottom, right? Now, my holes, of course, are round. So, if I put this through the hole, obviously, the little nub is not going to go into the hole. You can see right there, right? And it's just going to spin, like the problem I was having before. Uh, so, I am going to try, I, I stress, try, to adapt my hole so that square fits in there, the square on the carriage bolt down there, and kind of bites or kind of grabs a little bit to give me something to secure it from the back when I'm screwing uh, on the little knob over there. So that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna work this, see if I can get that done, and then we'll be able to put these together and put them back on. Okay, thought I'd show you my efforts to get the square uh, bolt into a round hole. Um, went and had to pick up a file actually. And what I did is I kind of tried to file the corners. Uh, it came out okay. You're not going to see it, so it's not a big deal. But the idea is to get it fit flush in there and still bite. And there you go. It's going to hold the bolt while I screw it on and it should work perfectly. Back in the truck, I've got my bolts all inserted so I don't have to mess with that. Now, I did mark these off, so my little strips here, metal bars, if you will, need to go in between these pieces of tape and be screwed back into these little connectors, which can be a bit of a chore. Usually, I have to put a screwdriver in behind to hold them forward because they go back too far. The screw won't reach. Um, and then get them started. So I'm going to go ahead, get those remounted, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, got both of them in. Uh, this just took a little more persuasion other than that one did. Unfortunately, I did the right ones. I have left here and right here. That's why I marked them. So I'm just going to tighten them down, and then uh, we'll move on to the next step. Next step is threading uh, the recovery board through or over the bolts, I guess, along with the lock that I have over here. So we're kind of just going to see if we can do all that at the same time. There we go. Okay, that's how it's going to ride. Now I just need to put, and I do put a bolt on underneath here, um, just finger tightened really, and that's just to stabilize it. Don't know that I need to, but do want to have that on, and I need to remove this uh, blue tape up here before I forget to do that. So I'll go ahead and do that, and then we'll come back. Okay, got the bolts finger tightened in to hold everything on. That came out well. Uh, these are just finger tightened, so I could easily pull them off if I needed to, and hopefully I wouldn't need both recovery boards anyway, but I could get them off if I needed to. So now it's a matter of putting the other running board over, fastening the padlock, and then putting the knobs on to hold it all in place. So we're going to do that now. I'll let you guys watch the carnage. Shouldn't be any carnage, I hope. Then we'll see if my little spacer idea actually works. Because frankly, I don't know. Okay. And the padlock through the hole, you can see there. So, now, there, we should be able to put these knobs on and fasten it all down. Let's see how it goes. I am going to put uh, some washers through. This is really more for aesthetics. You know, got to have that. Okay, and then the idea, anyway, is to put a washer or a spacer, I guess, there. It looks like it's going to be plenty. And then just fasten it down, like so. And that's it. That's all it really takes, right? Let's try the next one.
You can see already how this would be much easier to remove, right? Uh, than having uh, something that you need a tool for. I mean, I can just take these off, right? And the spacer allows me to do that. So I'll put the other ones on, we'll lock up the padlock. I will paint the edges of these bolts um, black just so it doesn't stick out, just to make it look a little bit better. Okay, it was successful. All done, got it painted up. At least the ends of the bolts painted. You guys can see right there. Let's zoom in a little bit. There you go. How about one more? There, you can see the ends of the bolts are painted. Now, I thought about painting the inserts, the spacers I put behind the, the knobs, but I think because they have a mirror finish in essence, they kind of uh, show blue because there's blue all around them. So I don't think there's any need, uh, nor did I really want to wait for them to dry, to be honest. So that's the project. I think it looks pretty good. Now it's just more easy or easier, I should say, to be able to get those off if I need to. And that was the whole point. No tool required. As far as security goes, I do have the padlock on right there. So you're not going to get them off unless you come here with a lot of time and a lot of tools uh, and try to figure out how I have them on there to begin with. So I think from a security standpoint, uh, I'm golden and it's no big deal. Anyway, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. This is, I'm thinking, the final iteration of my recovery board mounting. I can't see redoing them again. I think this is the perfect solution for them. Leave a comment, I'd be curious. Also, don't forget, I have two other channels, Rob Motive JT, all about my 2020 Jeep Gladiator, and Rob Motive Civic, about my experiences with the Honda Civic Type R and the Honda Civic Sport Hatchback. Check them out, and if you're interested, why the heck not subscribe? Don't forget to click that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. And do me a favor, smash that subscribe button on the way out. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.